So I've just watched the successful, very successful Tommy Robinson at uh, Speaker's Corner. And I just wanted to, I just wanted to, I just share my complete astonishment at the entire process that the uh, British government must have gone through, okay? So let's, let's think this through, going back a couple of weeks. So two weeks ago, they heard that Martin Selner was coming to give a speech. Brittany Pet Pettibone was going to interview Tommy Robinson. And Lauren Southern had just handed out leaflets in Luton. And somebody sat down and had a meeting right at the top of the government, because this doesn't happen low down, and said, we're going to block a bunch of people who have ideas about Islam. Mostly it was the Islam that's the problem, that they don't like. Gold star beer. Um, we're going to block them all from coming into the country. And we're not going to think through the next consequences of that. We're not going to look at how big Lauren Southern's uh, YouTube following is or Facebook or Twitter. We're not going to look at how big Brittany Pettibone or Marty Sel Martin Selner are. And we're going to block them. And we're just going to assume that that step ends the problem that we have, which is people talking about Islam in the UK. That, is that the thought process of Amber Rudd? And um, Theresa May, these geniuses running the country I used to call my home, is that their thought processes? Is that, is that the best they can do? Because these people at the same time are negotiating Brexit and uh, dealing with Iran, trying to get nuclear weapons. They're trying to tell you that they know what's going on with a Russian spy and his daughter being gravely ill in a botched assassination attempt, which doesn't sound very Russian to me, because the Russians seem pretty good at bumping people off. So those geniuses who are dealing on the world stage think stopping three young people all under 30 from coming to Britain is going to solve their problem. They can't foresee that the speech that Martin would have, written, would have spoken to 100 people in the park videoed for Generation Identity, gone up on their YouTube page, received 10,000 views. I mean, 20,000, 50,000. Let's, let's just, let's be totally generous to Martin Selner and, and Petty Bone and their audience. And even with Tommy promoting it, not, it just, it just wouldn't have gone anywhere. But now, what did you have today? I, I saw Republic Standard said 14,000 people in the park. I've got no idea. Now, great that the BBC were not there to give a... Because if the BBC had shown up, they would say it was 4,000 people or 2,000 people or some bullshit number. Now, because the mainstream don't show up, we get our side, the good side, the free speech side gets to set the agenda on the numbers. So that's fantastic. Um, but back to that original meeting. We're going to block Pettibone. We're going to block Selner. We're going to block Lauren Southern. And the problem is just going to disappear. That is the thinking of the British government. And that's why they're in such a shit show with Islam today, because their thinking has just been, don't tell anybody, they won't notice the grooming gangs, the 40 years. 1975 is the first reference that Peter uh, has found in his book. They, they, if you don't tell people, if you cover it up, if all the social workers just treat the girls as prostitutes, if the police who are steadily being infiltrated by more and more Muslims, which is the big problem. This was the question that the Lord Pearson asked. He didn't actually ask about the grooming gangs. He said, how many people from the councils and how many people from the police and other authorities have been investigated and arrested? And the government answer to Lord Pearson was that 33 policemen are under investigation. That's it. So far, in a 40-year scandal and cover-up, there's not actually been one conviction of anyone in authority for dereliction of duty, okay? Now, what has happened is a, a number of whistleblowers have all lost their jobs and been thrown out on the street. That was shown in the, um, the documentary and in the drama, Three Girls. The woman who tried repeatedly to bring attention to this, she lost her job. She was thrown out of her job. So the only people who get punished on the authority side for the grape gang scandal in the UK are the people who tried to bring attention to it. Just like the people who are getting punished for trying to speak their mind are Martin Selner, Brittany Pettibone, 
Lauren Southern you're creating martyrs. They're all still blocked from the UK. They can't go and visit the UK. They can't go and work. I mean, Lauren's been doing a lot of work with um, uh, with Kaylin and George. Uh, they're editing her movie, as far as I know, from South Africa. How can she work with them? She has to work with them remotely or they have to leave the UK. This is insanity all over speech. Once upon a time, there was freedom of speech. That's been lost. But today, by going to Speaker's Corner, which is just so wonderfully symbolic, Tommy, Tommy changed the paradigm again. You can stop the speaker, but you can't stop the speech. Great line. I think Martin came with that. But back again, I'll repeat what I said at the beginning of the stream. What on earth were they thinking in that cabinet meeting or that COBRA meeting or whatever it was at the very highest levels of government, Amber Rudd and her friends and probably Theresa May, what were they thinking? Ban these people, that'll be the last thing we hear from them. Ah, really? I've said it, I've said it on Twitter. The path that the British government is going down is either to wall off Britain from the entire internet in a kind of a Chinese wall situation, a great firewall of Britain, um, and hope that nobody from Britain ever travels outside and opens the internet and sees YouTube videos from their own country that they don't want them to see. It, it's unthinkable. Britain, and I'm going to say this to the Home Secretary and to the Prime Minister, Theresa May, your actions were obviously, predictably, inevitably going to lead to what happened today with Tommy Robinson being able to deliver a forbidden speech in the middle of Speaker's Corner with police standing all around him, unable to touch him because of the size of the crowd. That was what, that was the inevitable consequence of your actions. And if you couldn't see that coming, you are not fit to be running one of the world's major democracies. Cheers. Good night from Israel. And a great day for freedom in Britain. I, I really do hope the country I used to call home can save itself. Thanks for watching. Bye all.